Welcome back to the JSFL. We're here week after week four into week five. And we got a chaotic week coming ahead of us. And what a good week we have this week is let's talk about it a little bit. So, first of all, we had week four. Natives at power Thursday night football game. Great game. I actually got my prediction right on this one. The Natives did win in a nice high scoring one in Detroit. It just came down to mistakes by the power. And the Natives more clean. And that's what gave them the victory. Natives go to 3-1. and one, Power go to 1-3. and three. Heartbreaking for Power fans. Then the Fishers at the Pirates to start off the 1 p.m. on Sunday. And the Fishers, they get the win here. Put the Pirates 0-4. The Fishers go to 2-2. Two and two. Not much to say about this game. It was a rainy day in Cleveland. And Power, I mean the Fishers, just got it done. The Bats at the Earthquake. Oh, no, my bad. The bats at. Hold on, I'm reading this wrong. Oh, the Gale Monsters at Businessman was the other 1 p.m. game. And then that game was pretty good. Gale Monsters had a nice early lead on the Businessman in Phoenix. And the Businessman, they actually made a comeback, got it back to 2020, I believe. And the Gale Monsters just scored one more or two more times, and that was the game. So, Grenette, he did pretty well in that game, though. And Brian Tepps looked a little like a mold self, and I was expecting a Gale Monster win here. But Bisman put up a good fight. They go to one and three though. Gale Monsters go to three and one. And then week four. I mean, still week four. Four fifteen, I mean. Enforcers at the wind. The three and win came to the two, one and two enforcers. Houston came into this game with two straight losses. And they whooped Kansas City on the road. Um, shooter couldn't get going, that offense couldn't get going, and Houston's offense did what it needed to do, Jones made some pretty good plays, and then he did pretty well. Um, then it was the Predators at the Bats, oh, what a good one, a high scoring one here in Charlotte, the Predators had the lead going into the final stages, Phillips on fourth down, had Jackson wide open in the end zone, and he overthrew Tyler Jackson for the game, tire, or winner, it might have been a winner. But, yeah, and the Predators clinch on. They have two straight wins now, going 2-2. Two and two. They lead the East now, and the East is no longer the worst division leader in the league. It's actually Minneapolis for the North. And then, so Charlotte, they'll go to 1-3. and three. Then, you had the wrap-up, Week 4. The LA Earthquake hosting New Orleans. What a good game that was here to end off the week. And I think that was the biggest shutout in JSFL history. It was... I want to say 40 to nothing or something around that. But the New Orleans musician shut down. I mean, shut down. I mean, shut down Terry Foster. Foster, not the best game. Definitely. Uh, he didn't have the worst stats, but it wasn't good. Williams, his second game not having over 40 yards rushing. He's just not been good. He's not falling on the MVPs. I'm surprised he's still in the MVP talk. But his two first performances were elite. So that's, yeah, that's week four. Now let's go into the reigning, the power rankings. In 12th, no surprise, you have the Cleveland Pirates, the own, only 0-4 own team left. Um, they haven't been able to play against any good. They haven't been able to play good against anyone so far. If you look at their competition, it's not that bad either, I don't think. Week, let's see. Cleveland, they've had to play Kansas City week one. Week 2, Seattle. Okay, so that's a pretty good opponent. Week 3, they had to play the Predators. Yeah, the Predators, who are also an okay team, but not the best. And then week 5, they pl No, week 4, they played the Fishers. So, yeah. They haven't played the best teams in the league, but they're still losing. Hastings, of interception machine. 3 of 8 touchdown interception ratio. It's not been good for Hastings. I think they're if they get the first pick and get relocated, they're going for the, a new quarterback. So that would be two first-round picks where they would use quarterback to quarterback. Yeah, Hastings now working out in Cleveland. And then um, 11th, the worst 1-3 team in my opinion. It was a toss-up, but I'm going Charlotte. You had a chance to win against Atlanta at home. And you overthrew it. This is mostly because of Edward Phillips. Joey Adams carries that offense. Tyler Jackson, a great player too. Um, Edward Phillips, three to touchdowns, five interceptions. He did have a decent game in 
or last week, but he missed that game winner. The defense is mediocre, but I think um, I put the team at 10 where I did because they've played better against better opponents. And that is New York businessmen, the 1-3 New York team. They're going to be here. They almost came back against Phoenix in Phoenix where Charlotte lost at home. They lost on the road in a good game. But yeah, New York, they played okay. They just need better gameplay from their team's team here, and they're, they could be a t contender. Best 1-3 team, in my opinion, is number 9, Detroit Power. Oh my gosh, geez, this team could be 4-0 and if it weren't for the mistakes by Sean Richardson. Or I'm not just blaming on Sean Richardson. Sean Richardson, great quarterback. Stats don't show it, but he's pretty good. And it's just been fumbles by the team, mistake after mistake. Defense sometimes not doing its job. And that's really lost them older games. One and three. I think they can bounce back. But we'll have to see. Number eight, the Minneapolis Fishers. The worst two and two team in my opinion. Um Dakerson, not great numbers at all. He's two for two interceptions, touchdowns. I think that's the lowest amount of touchdowns in the league. But it's one of the lowest in the interceptions. He ties, I think, Garnett with lowest touchdowns in the league at two. But at least Garnett has a rushing touchdown, so I think he has the lowest total touchdowns in the league. I'd have to think, but yeah, maybe Teps ties him, but I think Teps is now ahead of him too. But yeah, Te Dakerson, not the best. Uh, Hoskins, he's been all right. He hasn't been the top running back. He's, he isn't an MVP talk or anything, but he's been solid. Um, yeah. I mean, they're okay. They got it done against Cleveland. We'll have to see what this team becomes. I don't know if they're gonna make it to the playoffs. They're kind of they're kind of where they're staying last year, that number nine area, number eight, number nine. Like they're not the best, but they're not gonna get relocated or anything. Number seven, I have LA two straight losses. Two weeks ago, they were number one, beating New Orleans. Now they got a loss to. Seattle, and then they have another loss to New Orleans, two top-tier teams, but God, have they looked terrible in these last two weeks. Williams, nothing going. He's been shut down. I mean, defense is playing lights out against him, and I thought he was good, but well, maybe he didn't play good defense, run defenses, in the first two weeks. Let's see. LA, they played see, Detroit week one. In week two, they played... Um... Earthquake, Earthquake. They played the Gila Monsters. Let's look at those run defenses. Run defense. The Gila Monsters, ninth. Power, eighth. Two bottom-of-the-half league rush defenses. And that's, where I guess, where William kind of, Williams kind of feasted. So, if I'm looking at Williams, and he cannot play good against a good rush defense. I mean, he's got to prove me otherwise. But right now, Williams, I don't think he would ever. I'm not, I'm, at this rate, no, he's not going to be MVP. He did play good against any defense. Like, Willie Rogers, he, st he still had a solid day against Houston. I think he did all right. I'm pretty sure he averaged, like, four or something per carry. That's not bad. But I can't remember. But I'm pretty sure he did okay. He's still number two in the MVP, so we'll get to that later. But number seven, I mean number six, Atlanta Predators, an East team. I don't think it's ever been ranked this high in the league before. But, yes, I'm going to give it to the Atlanta Predators over the LA Earthquake. Two straight wins. I mean, it's been sloppy, but they've got it done. They got it done against Cleveland, and then they got it done against Charlotte. I don't know if they'll stay in this spot. Uh, I think they're playing a pretty good team next week. They are playing... I'll, t I'll tell you if it's a good team or not, in my opinion. But I'm not going to tell you who it is yet. Oh, they're playing a okay team. Both of these teams need to prove themselves. But we'll see if they can keep that three win streak going. But then the road might get a little tougher for them. Then on fifth. Oh, I want to talk about the team a little bit. Rohan Foyle, most touchdowns in the league. He had a three. He put up a hat trick on Sunday. And then Ron Foyle, he also, I mean, Trent Hudson. He's looking like an MVP candidate. Off, in my opinion, top running for rookie of the year right now. I don't think there's anyone that can really come close to him, to be honest. Um... Kyle Shooter, maybe, but definitely Hudson is my number one rookie of the year pick right now. And yeah, it's all team. Defense has been playing all right. They've been doing their part. There go six. 
Number five, the best 2-2 two two team, in my opinion, is Houston. They played lights out against Kyle Shooter, the best offense in the league. They shut down. Warren Jones was able to command the offense to a few points. I mean, it wasn't looking like the best offense in the league, but Houston, they haven't had the best offense in the league. They've always relied on the defensive side of the football, and that's what they really did today. Um, we know Houston has been the most solid on the offense, and yeah, good football. And Houston, it's going to get my number five spot. Number four, the worst 3-1 and one team in the league is the Kansas City win. You went up against a team that isn't, wasn't even top half of the league last week, and you ranked second. I mean, I didn't want to rank you there, but you had to be ranked there. But you got shut down by Houston. Offense couldn't do anything. Your defense, it looked okay, but you couldn't shut down Warren Jones when you needed to. You're not that great of a football team. I don't know if you're going to make the playoffs or not. You have a hard division. You have the Houston Enforcers, your divisional rival who you just lost to, and New Orleans, who's obviously the best team in football right now. So, I don't know. You have a long way to go before you're going to make it to the playoffs. You, you're you coming off a, a championship loss, and that's hard. But I don't know if this is going to be a championship, a playoff team this year. All right, number four is, no, number three is the Phoenix Steel Monsters, the formal JSFL championships team. Um, two straight wins in a row now for Phoenix. Getting a nice win at home against New York. They'll maybe be on the road next week. I have to check. They will be... On the road next week. In a pretty hard game, actually. This should be a good game. But we'll see how they do. Tep's okay. Uh, jokes, he's really looking like an MVP candidate. He just needs to get a few more better games. And he can really push his name up in the ballots. But we'll see how he does. So, yeah. And number two, three straight wins. It's the Seattle Natives. They had the best record in the league last year um, when they went 9-3. and three. And they're looking like their form of selves that went 6-0 and to start off the season last year. They started the season with the loss against Minneapolis. Team people were, I was saying that I didn't think there would be that good of a team if they are losing to Minneapolis, which I thought was a mediocre team coming into this year. But, wow, is that defense good. Trevor went in a pick six at first of his career. Defense can play great. They can force turnovers like Stefan Hernandez, the best, probably the best player on that team, on that game. He'd probably be the best player on the defense in that game, at least. And then Kermit Poe is looking great. Cole New, he's almost putting him put his name to the MVP race. He was one point short of taking the 10th spot. And then number one is the New Orleans Musicians. So, two weeks ago, New Orleans and L.A. would have been the undefeated team against the undefeated team, top two teams. And L.A., they lost, and then New Orleans, they won, so it's 3-0 against 2-1 team. But New Orleans destroyed. Biggest shutdown in JSFL history. Um, it's only been two seasons, well, one and a half, I guess. But, yeah, destroy of the L.A. Earthquake by New Orleans. Great game. Sub Skies is looking really good. Castles had a great game, too. Um, Dante and Graves are just a terrible, terrible team, or a terrible, a great threat, I mean, to, for defenses to match up with. Well, it's terrible for the defenses to try to, um, scheme for them. <laughs> then we got the playoff picture. Relocation status, Cleveland Pirates 0-4. In the hunt, LA Earthquake 2-2 two two at the number 2 spot. Number 1, Houston Enforcers 2-2 two two at the number 1 spot. 6th seed, Kansas City win 3-1. 5th seed, Phoenix Skill Monsters 3-1. Fourth seed, Minneapolis Fishers, two and two. Third seed, Atlanta Predators, two and two. Second seed, with the bye, Seattle Natives, three and one. And first seed, New Orleans Mich Musicians, four and zero. Oh. MVP race, Eugene Green at number ten with the New York Businessman. Great player. Let's look at the stats real quick. Stats for Eugene Green: seventy-two attempts, three hundred forty-three yards, three touchdowns, sixteen broken tackles, fifty-plus receiving yards in a game, and one receiving touchdown. Solid option. He's been doing great for New York. I'm not going to add too much on these guys. Just going to say their stats and stuff. Number nine is Frank Jog of the Cleveland Pirates. Great player. Um, let's look at the stats. Frank Jog, 89 attempts, leads the league. 493 yards, two touchdowns, 17 broken tackles, but no receiving yard. No receiving yard, 50 plus receiving yards, or a receiving touchdown yet for Jog. Number eight is Ross Williams of the LA Earthquake. 
uh, has made great recently. Let's look at the stats. Russ Williams, 68 attempts, 410 yards, two touchdowns, 17 broken tackles, and two receiving touchdowns. Not too bad for Williams, but he's looked really sloppy in these last two games. Number seven, new one to the MVP race, Joey Adams. Been helping the bats in the last two games. Started off rough, but he's looked pretty good. 58 attempts, 417 yards, three touchdowns, seven broken tackles, over 50 plus receiving yards in two games, and two receiving touchdowns. One of the best receiving backs so far in the league, and he's known for his power, so that's pretty cool. Number six is Julio Jokes of the Phoenix Gila Monsters. Uh, let's look at the stats. So Julio Jokes took over Frank Jog. His first season as a full starter. Let's see how he is. 84 attempts, 485 yards, two touchdowns, 19 broken tackles, 50 plus receiving yards in a game, and one receiving touchdown. Pretty good stats for Mr. Julio Jokes. Number five is the rookie, Trent Hudson. Let's look at the stats. Hudson, 77 for 103, 813 yards, 8 touchdowns, 3 picks, and 50 plus rush yards in a game and 1 rushing touchdown. Hudson looks pretty good in this season so far. Number 4, Taylor Little of the Detroit Power. Let's look at the stats. He's starting to put himself in the name, see if he can get back-to-back -back MVPs. That would be insane. Um, 81 attempts, 467 yards, 2 touchdowns, 24 broken tackles, leads the league, and 1 receiving touchdown. Not bad for Taylor. Hasn't done much in the receiving game, but I don't think he did too much last year either. Number 3 is Seth Skies of the New Orleans Musicians. Led his team to an undefeated start so far, only undefeated team left. Uh, let's look at the stats. 98 completions, most in the league, out of 119 attempts. Six, no, 1,076 yards, eight touchdowns, zero picks, and yeah, Seth's guy's great. Solid player. He doesn't really care about his stats too much, he just cares about getting the job done, and that's a great thing about a quarterback. Number two, Willie Rogers. Let's look at the stats. Um, he got injured last week in the end of the season. That's really helped hold him back on the MVP scales last time. Willie Rogers, 76 attempts, 529 yards, 6 touchdowns, most in the league. 14 broken tackles. Also, he leads in yards in the league at 529, too. No receiving yards, though. Receiving things. And number one for MVP right now is Kermit Poe. Led his team three straight wins so far. And he's trying, trying to catch up on New Orleans musicians and such guys. Let's look at the stats. 72 for 94. 895 yards, 6 touchdowns, 2 picks, 50 plus rush yards in the game, and 5 rushing touchdowns. Obviously, so far, the best rushing quarterback this year, and we'll see if he keeps that up. But solid gameplay so far from Kermit Poe. And that is it for MVP race. Let's go into the tops. Quarterback tops, completion, Seth Skies, 98. Attempts, Kendall Hastings, 133. Yards, Kyle Shooter, barely holding on to this one, 1,114. Touchdowns, there's three of them at eight. Interceptions, Kendall Hastings at eight. Halfback tops, Frank Jog with attempts, 89. Willie Rogers with yards, 529. Touchdowns, Willie Rogers, six. Broken tackles, Taylor Little, 24. Wide receivers and tight end tops. Receptions, Carl Graves, 27. Yards, Kurt Hammond, 342. Lana Dante starting to creep up on them, by the way. Touchdowns, Ron Foyle, 5. Defensive tops, Wesley Francis with solo tackles with 30. Assists, there's 3 of them at 16. Tackles for loss, Luke Frankie with 8. Sacks, Roland Lemus with 13. He had 5 on Monday. And turnovers, Byron Baxter still at 4. Didn't have one this week, but he still leads the league. Let's look at offense. Worst offense in the league is the businessman, 12th. 11th and eleventh is the Earthquake, surprisingly. They fell really a lot. 10th, Gila Monsters. 9th, Predators. 8th, Enforcers. 7th, Power. 6th, Bats. 5th, Pirates. 4th, Power. 3rd, Natives. 2nd, Musicians. 1st, Wind. Rush offense, 12th, Businessman. 11th, Earthquake. 10th, Predators. 
ninth bats, eighth fishers, seventh pirates, sixth enforcers, fifth wind, fourth musicians, third power, second natives, and the first is Gil monsters. Passing yards, twelfth Gila monsters, so they they're best in the rush offense but worst in the pass offense. Eleventh businessmen, tenth enforcers, ninth predators, eighth fishers, seventh power, six bats, five natives, four pirates, third earthquake, second mu musicians, and first the wind. Let's look at the defensive stats. Worst defense in the league, twelfth pirates. 11th Predators, 10th Power, 9th Wind, 8th Businessman, 7th Gila Monsters, 6th Fishers, 5th Bats, 4th Earthquake, 3rd Natives, 2nd Enforcers, and best defense in the league goes to Musicians. Rush, off, rush Defense, 12th Pirates, 11th Earthquake, 10th Fishers, 9th Gila Monsters, 8th Power, 7th Predators, 6th Bats, 5th Wind, 4th Businessmen, 3rd Musicians, 2nd Natives, 1st Enforcers, <clears throat> and Pass Defense, 12th Predators, 11th Wind, 10th Pirates, 9th Power, 8th Businessmen, 7th Gila Monsters, 6th Enforcers, no, Fishers, my bad, 6th is Fishers, 5th Natives, 4th Bats, Third enforcers, second earthquake, and first is musicians. And that is Pat offense and defensive stats. And let's go finish off the week with the schedule for week five. Me commentating this one. Thursday night prime time. Two and two Houston enforcers at two and two Minneapolis Fishers. Enforcers coming off a win. Minneapolis coming off a win. And who? Give me two in a row for the enforcers. I think they get it done on the road. Uh, Warren Jones, I think he's going to have a pretty good game against this defense for Minneapolis that is ranked 6. They've played pretty good, but I think they give out kind of like they did against Charlotte. Um, Tony Dackerson won't be able to do much against Houston, I'm going to guess. And yeah, give me this one, Houston. Let, and then 1, 1 p.m., you get to see the full game for once. But I'm not going to be commentating. It will be the Madden commentators. Oh, no, you, you'll get to see um, America's Game of the Week. Actually, let me pick that out quick. Power Pirates. Yeah, okay, that's not going to be Game of the Week. Power at the Pirates, 1 p.m. You'll see Madden commentators. Watch the whole game. Power at Pirates, and I'm going to give this one Power. Yeah, Pirates come in for their second game, but Power, they've been sloppy. But I think they're going to get it done against this team. I don't think... I think Sean Richardson will have a great game. It should be a good one for the power to win. Bats at Earthquake for your other 1 p.m. game. Uh, Bats, they've played sloppy, but they've been decent with Joey Adams. Earthquake have played really sloppy. And I think it continues. They're at home, though, but I'm going to give it to the Bats. I think Joey Adams has a great game. Um, Bats not too bad at the defensive rush attack. So I think um, that Williams won't have that good of a game in Foster. Getting a little slump from last week. He'll try to get them to win, but he will fail. It will be a bats game. Then, 4-15, the wind at the Musicians. Another divisional game for the wind. They're going to lose this one. It's going to be Musicians. They're going to go 5-0. and That's going to be, I think, it will be a gr another great win for the wind. I mean, the Musicians. Shut down Kyle Shooter. Uh, Willie Rogers, he'll probably have an okay game. Um, Castles might have an okay game, but I think Skies is really going to shine in this game. Facing the eleventh pass defense, and that will be Madden commentators. And then this is America's game of the week: Gila Monsters at Natives, three and one against three and one divisional matchup in Seattle. Give me the Natives going four straight wins. It's gonna be a tough one, but the home field advantage and Kermit Post slinging that ball. Uh, Texas looks sloppy, and this defense has looked great for Seattle this season. Give me the Natives. I'll be commentating that one. But then Monday night, we got the businessmen at the Predators to finish it off. Both teams need to prove themselves. Predators going two wins in a row. Um, businessmen, they are two losses in a row. It's in Atlanta. I think the Predators just coming off all those wins. 
They finish at least one more against the division rival New York. Garnett can play sloppy. This defense isn't the best for Atlanta. High scoring one, maybe. Give me Atlanta in a close one. And that is going to be it here for the JSFL Week 5. And college is actually coming up. It's coming up in at, on Week 7. So that should be great. I should be commentating most of those, I believe. And, yeah, I'm excited to see the season. I like the prospects. Um, this draft class was a little lower down than the other one because I think the prospects from the last draft class were too high. So I did rank them down a little bit. I think the highest you can get at 85, lowest 60 overall. But, yeah, I'll see you guys week five. See ya.